that could have several names. Uh, and in this episode, what I want to do is basically simplify it into putting numbers to the chords rather than the actual names. So before we get stuck into this any deeper, let me give you some ideas of what the diminished chord actually sounds like. Okay then, so probably the first diminished chord that anybody plays is this one down here. It uses two fingers and sounds like this. If I was to do each individual string, if you can't quite see what I'm doing here, just have a look at the uh, computer graphic on the screen. Okay, so now the thing is with the diminished chord, it has a unique sound. Bit of suspense, I think, yeah? Okay, now there's only two ways that you can play diminished chord. This is in its lowest position. And then everything from now on is gonna use this second shape. So I'm gonna move from this here to here. So again, if you can't quite see what I'm doing with my fingers here, have a look at the computer graphic and you will see. Now, the rule is this. It breaks all the rules because I can move this further up the fretboard and have exactly the same named chord, okay? So I could go here. I could go here, I could go here, I could go here. And those are what we call inversions of basically the same chord. You can play them in different places. Now this is the only chord, bar one, where you can actually retain the same shape, but moving it a number of frets. Now in this case, let's start from here again. This diminished chord here is the same. If I go one, two, miss two, go to the third one. Miss two, one, two, go to the third one. Miss two, go to the third one, yeah? Of course, that's gonna work the other way as well. Miss two, miss two, miss two. Okay, notice I haven't changed the actual configuration of the shape, yet I've had all these different places I can play the same chord, so it is rather unique. Now, diminished chords can be very complicated in the fact they can be called any one of their components. So I could actually have it named this, which if I'm picking the fourth string, I've got a G sharp there, haven't I, yeah? So it could be called G sharp diminished. If I was to play this uh, string three here, I'm playing a D, a note of D, it could be called D diminished. If I'm playing the second string, so we've got G, C, E, we've got F there. So it could be called F diminished, okay? And if we go onto the first string, that's a B. It could also be called B diminished. Now, isn't that crazy? So one shape can have four different names. So any one of the strings, it can have the same name, yeah? Now, if I was to move it, I'm skip to one, two here. I'm going to try and find one of these notes down here as well as here. So let's listen to this note here. Where is that on here? It's on the first string on there. If I go to this one. So I'm now looking for that here. It's on the second string on that one. I'm now looking for this one. Uh, where is it? There it is. It's on the fourth string there and only one more to go okay now that one is one octave lower but the fact is it's an octave it is the same note okay now if I was to move up to miss two one two and I'm here now I'm going to be looking here just to see where these notes are comparing this one with the first one so here we go where is this note There it is, it's an octave lower. Let's try another note. So I'm playing this shape here on the uh, sixth fret and I'm picking the third string. Where is it? It's now the fourth string on that first shape. So you get the idea.
So on each of those chord shapes, you notice that the same notes are there. So therefore, it's an exact inversion of there, of there, of there, of there. And all I have to do is miss two frets to be able to pull this trick off. So to simplify it, rather than calling it one of the strings, so that could be one of four different names, no matter where it is, up and down the neck, I have a very simple way. OK, when I'm playing this one here that we did initially, I'm going to call that diminished nut because here is the nut. OK, so diminished nut, that's the lowest one I can do. Then we moved up to this one, do you recall? Yeah. Now, instead of calling this any one of these four, that one, that one, that one or that one, I'm going to call this diminished one. Now, why one? because I'm always going to go off where my index finger is. So wherever this finger is on the fretboard, we're going to call that the number. So that would be diminished one. This would be diminished two. This would be diminished three. This would be diminished four and so on. So wherever my index finger is, is going to be the number. OK, so in this case, diminished five. So if we started off with this one here, yeah, and we skipped two, one, two, now we're on there. Okay, so diminished nut is the same as diminished three. Skip two, four, five, it's the same as diminished six. It's the same as diminished nine, okay? So who on earth would use the diminished chord? I'm gonna give you some examples right now. Um, if I was doing uh, a song like Ain't Misbehaving, um, it's, uh, it's great for doing uh, diminished chords. So we've got things like this. Very second chord is diminished, yeah? Fourth chord is a diminished, yeah? Here comes another diminished. So within basically the first six to eight chords has been three of those have been diminished. OK, let me put it in tempo. See if you can spot them. So there you go. There's one way of doing it. Again, if we go right back into sort of classical music, there's a piece called Warsaw Concerto and uh, it drops in about the sixth chord in. So if I just play the intro to it, it's got... Wow, doesn't that sound dramatic there? Now, as I said that this shape now can repeat itself. So if I miss two, one, two, and play there, this is an inversion of that. Again, if I, if I miss two, one, two, is an inversion of that and that. Okay, so I could do this. Here we go. So instead of staying on that for all the time, I actually use the inversions by missing two, playing it, missing two and playing it again. Makes more sense with tunes, doesn't it? So one of the most famous tunes uh, was done by George Harrison and he used the uh, diminished chords as a run to great effect in uh, My Sweet Lord. So it kind of goes like this. Here we go. Here we go. Wow. Okay. So let's look at what we did then. I went all the way up to the ninth. Yeah. So seven, eight, nine. I'm calling it nine because that's where my index finger is. Remember? Yeah. Okay. I went from nine to six to three to diminish nut. Yeah. So what can go one way, go the other way. So instead of going, he did it that way. 
Yeah, and it really makes it so. So there you go, there's some examples of the diminished chord, what it sounds like, uh, two different ways of playing it, either with two fingers or with all four fingers, and then you can literally move it up and down the neck. As long as you have two spaces in between, you've got a repetition of that chord. Hope you've enjoyed this 10 minutes with Pete Moss. Cheers for now.